In business news, the National Bureau of Statistics says Nigeria's Railway Corporation generated 715.09 million naira in revenue from passengers in the third quarter of 2022. NBS Rail Transport data for Q3 and Q4 2022 released in Abuja shows that the figure dropped by 60.52% compared to 1.81 billion naira received in Q3 of 2021. Similarly, it showed that 101.84 million naira was collected in Q3 of 2022 as revenues from goods, cargoes, this dropped by 7.04% from 109.556 million naira received in Q3 of 2021. The report further showed that the number of rail transport passengers in Q3 of 2022 dropped by 500,348 compared to 696,841 in Q3 of 2021. With Nigeria's annual inflation rate hitting 22.04% in the month of March from 21.91% in February 2023 and the federal government's planned removal of fuel subsidy in June, economic and energy experts say the prevailing situation and indices in the country might make it near impossible. Chief Executive Officer of the Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, Dr. Muda Yusuf, O.K.'s palliative was suggested should be segmented to reach the vulnerable. In the same vein, Mr. Kenneth Rikume, a partner, tax reporting and strategy with Pricewaterhouse Corporates on our flagship program, Business Nigeria, suggests ways which federal government can cushion the effect of subsidy removal, especially for the less privileged. To carry the weight of, of subsidy, it is not definitely not sustainable. And there's actually no way for the government to do it um, at this time because, you know, in terms of how much the government can borrow, um, you know, it's it's reaching it's reaching the limits. It's even bust through the limits, to be fair. Um, so there is really no um no way, nowhere to go. You know, the government must look at it carefully, such that it is not, you, you know what I mentioned. Inflation is not really a problem. It is the vote, an abrupt increase in inflation. So government must phase the removal of fuel subsidy um, so that it happens over a reasonable period of time um, while giving the citizens the ability to, to adjust. Um, that's one. The second one is that there must clearly be um, some um, palliatives to ensure that the impact is absorbed. Um, and those palliatives should actually focus on the most vulnerable. If they're able to package the phasing of the subsidy removal and you know, specific um, programs that focus on palliatives to the most vulnerable, um, I think it can be managed. Um, it will not eliminate it because it's gonna be, it, you know, it, it's gonna be serious because um, there are a lot of, um, there, there's a significant ecosystem currently in Nigeria that relies on petrol for their sustenance. Still talking business now, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries says global primary energy demand is forecast to increase by 23% in the period to 2045, which necessitates utilizing all forms of energy. Secretary General Mr. Ethiam al -Gahis, during the sixth edition of the Nigerian International Energy Summit, with theme Global Perspective for Sustainable Energy Future, says many of its member countries had invested heavily in renewables, which had received a positive endorsement from the G20 developing nations. Mr. Al Gahis listed the renewables as solar, nuclear, wind, and waste to energy power. In addition to carbon capture utilization and storage, an hydrogen project, as well as circular carbon economy. The Secretary General, while commending President Buhari for being a strong supporter of OPEC, also looked forward to continued cooperation with the incoming administration led by President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. To curb some standard products in the country, the Standards Organization of Nigeria has introduced a product authentication mark. In view of this, consumers can now detect, reject, and report some standard goods in the market. If Ulaiza tells us more. The Standards Organization of Nigeria says the introduction of the product authentication mark 
is part of the agency's ongoing efforts to respond to substandard products in the country. The agency says the development of the scheme is to facilitate the verification of source and quality of products in Nigeria. Palm is something that you put on individual products that every individual can scan that particular product and then it will tell you the history of the product, whether it's authentic or not authentic. Um, certification usually confines to putting a label on a product, uh, um, confirming that the product has, been, has gone through uh, rigorous checks by Standard Organization of Nigeria. So these are complementary to each other. This is just an additional uh, you know, uh, safety measure for our products uh, in the country. We have come up with this to give the purchaser, the, the buyer, opportunity to confirm first the authenticity, the quality of the product before even paying for it. The agency explains that the initiative became necessary as a control measure to protect Nigerian consumers from substandard products consumption. PAM is respectfully to protect the industry and to protect the public from uh, uh, substandard products in the market. Before you commit your money to this product, you have opportunity now to scan your phone. If you don't have a smartphone, there is number 281 that you will text to. So you look at the product, text that number of the label to that 281 number. It will come back immediately to you telling you, okay, this is the product you're looking at, and this is authentic, and it's still uh, good, it's not expired. When you scan a product, you realize it's substandard, it is not good. Raise alarm. Don't keep quiet so that the relevant agencies can go down there and carry out an enforcement work on that particular product. It is envisaged that the new product authentication mark will complement the existing SON conformity assessment programs. As a result, Nigeria will be able to combat substandard and counterfeit products to a greater degree. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. Japan's government has invited the African Union to the forthcoming G7 summit and excluded regular attendees in South Africa. Comoros President Azi Asumani and the current chairman of the Continental Body is expected to represent Africa at the talks in Orishima. It said the president of Comoros, who is the current chair, will attend the G7 Plus meeting and not South Africa. The African Union, made up of 55 member states, has sought to become a prominent member of the Group of 20 wealthy nations and in December receiving barking from U.S. President Joe Biden for it to be the meeting uh, of global powers is set to take place from May 19 to 21. Asian shares market were in a cautious mood today as global investors waited to see whether China recorded a first quarter bounce back from its punishing pandemic lockdowns that led to major economic slowdowns. MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares outside Japan was down 0.4% after U.S. stock features ended the previous session with mild gains. The index was up 1.1% so far this month. Australian shares were down 0.37%, while Japan's nickel stock index rose 0.5%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 0.3%. S&P 500 gained 0.33%. Nasdaq Composite Index gained 0.28%. European stocks ended just barely uh, lower to snap a five-session streak of gains with Pan region stock 600 index down 0.01%. Crude oil prices from, rose from, uh, from up slightly today after falling 2% in the previous game. As stronger economic data from the world's largest crude importer, China, on the pine, the demand outlook. Now, U.S. West Texas intermediate crude sales at $81.08, up 0.31%. Brent is up 0.34%, selling $95.05. Bonnie Light is down 1.80%, selling at $84.49. OPEC basket down 1.11%, selling at $86.80.